Hey everybody, it's me, Sarah Thomas. I'm the technology liaison over at John Hanson French Immersion School in Temple Hills, Maryland. If we're not already connected on Twitter, let's be sure to do so. Um, my Twitter handle is below, at Sarah the Teacher. Website, sarahjanethomas.com. Facebook page, if you want to connect there, facebook.com forward slash Sarah the Teacher. Check out the blog at sarahtheteacher.com. And finally, we have a brand spanking new Google Educators group for the D.C. area. Um, I just tiny URL did tinyurl.com forward slash G-E-G-D-M-V, and that's going to be the hashtag on Twitter as well, G-E-G-D-M-V. Um, 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 it's, it's the D.C. area, G-E-G, but you are allowed to join as many as you want, as far as I know. Um, we'd love to have anybody from, you know, anywhere in the world, really, um, just because we all win when we share our knowledge and we share our resources. So speaking of connecting, today our topic du jour is five ways for educators to get connected. So today I'm just going to give you like a, a little rundown on some of my favorite sites and tips and tricks and stuff like that just um, to be connected. So I know that People throw around that phrase a lot, connected educator, connected person. What does that really mean? Well, let me put it to you guys this way. I had kind of a revelation a couple of days ago um, while I was taking a shower, and of course that's where all the best ideas come from when you're in the shower. But um, it just kind of hit me. I was just like, well, you know, there's over 7 billion people in this world, so what are we really? We're just like little dots. Like if you look at us, if, if you were able to like see a map with everyone on Earth, I would be like a little dot. You would be a dot. We'd all be dots. But if you remember back when you were a kid, you might have played Connect the Dots. And what happened when you started connecting these dots? You got this beautiful picture. And the same thing goes with us being connected people. We need to connect in many different ways, collaborate, share our experiences, share our expertise, uh, learn from others. And that helps everyone. Um, I went to Edscape back in, I want to say, October, October 2013, and uh, George Kouros was a keynote, and he said that the room is smarter than the individual, so definitely the world, now with social media, the world is smarter than the individual. All of us together, you all are smarter than me, by far, by far, trust me, <laughs> and um, same goes for everyone else, so it's, it's really good to connect and to draw on other people's um, experiences and other people's knowledge. So I'm just going to share with you a few ways that I like to connect, not just as an educator, but as a person, because I've been hearing that distinguishing um, vocabulary a lot lately. So just want to share that with you guys. So this is in no particular order, but I um, want to first say, talk about Twitter. Now, Twitter has really been growing in education and we're seeing a lot of educators just getting connected. I tried to look online today to see how many educators there were in the world, couldn't find it. Tried to see how many there were in the United States. Um, the most recent statistic I got was from 2012 and it appears that there were around 4 million educators in the United States at that time. 4 million educators! Now, if we all got on Twitter, what what kinds of things could we do? It's crazy. It's amazing. Let me give you an example of what Twitter has done for me. Okay, and this one is not necessarily an educational example. Um, a lot of you may know that I'm really, really into music. So every year we take our kids to this camp um, at the border of our state in Pennsylvania. And uh, this time one of the camp directors had like a one-man band thing going on stage. You know, he would like... <laughs> And he would loop that, and he'd like press a little button with his foot, and then, you know, the <laughs> would go in the background, and then he'd do like something different, like, <laughs> like that. And it just kept building, and all of a sudden, he had like this instrumental track that he would like play his guitar and sing to. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever, but I went online to check out, um, to check that out, how much something like that would cost. And I was just like, I'm not paying that. So I was just like, okay, well, let me just do an experiment. Let me go on Twitter and see if anybody knows of a way that I can do this for free or for cheap. I want something live that will let me loop, um, you know, things that I sample coming from myself. So let me show you what happened with that. Let me share my screen with you. Start screen share. Bada bing. Okay, here we go. Now, this was on Sunday. So I put this out to PLN. Random question. Does anyone know of any free looping? Blah, blah, blah. You can read it. And I put 
uh, three hashtags on it. First one, PLN, stands for Personalized Learning Network. Then EdTech was the second hashtag I put, and that's a huge, huge hashtag. Um, a lot of different people follow it. Um, and the third one was PG Tech, just for my district. Oh, and I got to say about the EdTech thing, too. Um, there might be 4 million-plus educators in the United States, but what about in different countries too? Hmm, that's another thing to think of. So I, I don't know how many educators there are, but anyway, there's a bunch of people um, who are interested in educational technology. So I tagged it with those three hashtags. I got a bunch of answers back, and scrolling down here, then someone found that there was Loopy HD, which is an app from the App Store. That's only four bucks. Four bucks as compared to like hundreds or thousands ah sounds like a winner to me so I put that out there and let me let me go back to the screen share let's see I asked this at hmm oh, oh 8.01 p.m. I had my answer in an hour 9.06 p.m. and I could have you know this saved me from from spending like all this money I didn't have to just by putting a question out and in an hour I got an answer back and this was from somebody I believe at the time we weren't even following each other so I mean just by using those hashtags that answer was uh, it just saved me like money and all kinds of things so Twitter is the bomb dot com and not only can you use it for stuff like that you can use it educationally you can use Twitter chats. Twitter chats is a great thing. Um, you can hop on a Twitter chat and they go by the hashtag. So Cyberman um, Jerry Blumengarten uh, has a huge list of every Twitter chat that's out there that relates to educational technology. So just um, type in Cyberman1 in search and uh, Twitter chats and that'll pop up. Also want to give a huge shout out to Suzanne Bearden. She has a new app uh, on the App Store called Tweech Me. And it's only 99 cents, and that'll help anybody who's starting to get into Twitter. Um, it has a, it also has a list of Twitter chats, but it teaches you how to use Twitter educationally, how you can use it um, in these Twitter chats, and you know, just collaborate with educators around these topics that really interest you. And you'd have to see it to believe it. Um, I was talking about that with some members of my PLN yesterday, and. One guy was saying, yeah, you know, he didn't really see the value until he actually got on there and tried it out. And then he sees how valuable these Twitter chats are. They're extremely addictive. So proceed with caution. Take it from me because uh, <laughs> a lot of my nights are caught up in Twitter chats. A um, couple to get you started. There's Sat Chat, which is a good one, Saturday mornings. Um, there's a bunch. Oh, goodness. If I get started, then I can I could probably talk about talk for half an hour on just Twitter chats alone but um if you're new to Twitter there's uh NT Ooh, I'm getting it messed up okay all right forget I said that but there is a new uh new to Twitter for teachers chat and I believe that that's Saturdays at nine so just look for the hashtag and one great thing about the chats you don't have to ask anybody for permission to join you just you know you just find the hashtag search for the hashtag say whatever you have to say and boom and one tool that you might want to use is called TweetDeck let me show you guys how that works let me pull it up so TweetDeck.com let me share my screen boom 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 okay so here's TweetDeck and you will see that it allows you to okay so I'm signing in yay yay all that great stuff okay so here I have different columns set up um, by hashtags I also have my notifications and different hashtags for different things I was doing um, so you know you can you can set them up in columns and that helps out a lot during Twitter chats because you can set one up by the hashtag and you'll be able to see everything all of the chats that come all of the tweets that come through on that hashtag during that time so tweet deck is awesome um, Hootsuite is another great tool where you can like schedule your tweets and uh, monitor like different lists it's, it's awesome I, I could do a I have done one about Twitter. I know I owe you guys Twitter 102, so I, I'll definitely do that and go more in depth. Um, one more thing that I wanted to share with you guys is about Twitter list. Um, you can set up list. If you go to someone's name on Twitter and um, you go like next to their little icon thing. Hold on, let me see if I can show you guys. Uh, okay, so twitter.com. Let me see. Um, I'm going to. Let me see. What's my old? Okay, there we go. 
pulling it up right now. Okay. So I have my old page that I've all but abandoned right now. Let me make sure that nothing's crazy is on there. Okay, cool. Alrighty then. So this is my old page. So I'll demonstrate on myself. Now, if you go to this gear icon, then you can add or remove them to different lists. So I've created a list called Tweeps. You can make it private. You can make it public. Whatever. Um, I leave mine private, but that's just where I go because um, I, I want to see. There's certain certain people in my network that you know we're we're kind of like this. Like I want to see everybody's tweets, but I definitely want to make sure I don't miss out on their tweets. So I've created my tweets list, and that way, um, in one shot, I can just log on, look and see, hey, what are what are you know all my buddies up to. And that way, you know, I can I can see it, and still I I'm not excluding anyone. I still see everything that everyone that I'm following has um has tweeted out uh, if I want to. So Twitter is tool number one. Let's see here, tool number two. Got to give it up for Google. Woo! Google, I am such a Google head. Okay, um, I just came back from Google Teacher Academy. I want to say last month, like right before ISTE, and it was awesome. I met so many awesome people, and I've always loved Google, but this has made me love Google even more. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys about that. But um, but one thing I want to tell you about is Google Plus. If you are on there, then it is awesome. Join the communities. Look up different communities. You'll see different things that people have to offer. Let me see if I can pull that up for you guys. Google.com. Um, 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 um. Okay. So I'm going to pull up my communities and show you guys what I mean. Start my screen share. Okay. You'll see I'm in 50 million different communities here. But um, but yeah, you can find communities based on anything. Um, I have stuff here for Genius Hour. I have different Google Educator groups. I have, you know, different Ed Camps on here. Um, you can search for anything like educational technology. Search for that, and then it'll come back with this whole list of great things that you can join. Or you can even create your own. If you click on this Create Community button, it's awesome. Um, there was this great presentation from one of my cohort members at uh, GTA Atlanta and she was talking about how she uses them with her students that is awesome the possibilities are endless so Google communities great also Google Hangouts on air or Google Hangouts now as a teacher um, we got snowed out a lot this past year and uh, it was really unfortunate timing because I had just given my kids this monster project and they were like we don't get it we don't know so what we did is that we used Google Hangouts to do a hangout on air um, which was virtual office hours and this right here what I'm doing right now is a Google Hangout on air so you can do the same with your students um, what I did is that I enabled the Q&A feature so the students you know I, I gave them the link I told them what time to meet me uh, online on Google at the link and they were able to put in their questions I saw them pop up on my screen I was able to answer them as they came and the beauty of it is that for a hangout on air then it will automatically send it to your YouTube page so the students who weren't able to join in at that particular time they were still able to go back and view the video so it's awesome also Google Hangouts using that as a um, as a podcast is awesome I'm seeing a lot of people doing it Shout out to uh, to Techlandia crew. Shout out to Dr. Will. Shout out to Gwen Chat, and so many others um, are really leveraging this Google Hangout uh, on air or Google Hangout as a tool. Um, when we were planning our Ed Camp in the spring, winter, springish, then we use Hangouts a lot to just collaborate. We didn't have to all be in the same place at the same time. All of the members of the planning team, we were able to jump on all at once and just kind of share um, share our thoughts and it was very convenient there was no traffic to fight through um, and for the most part people's schedules just mesh so the possibilities are endless Google Hangouts are awesome another thing I kind of alluded to was Google educators groups these are kind of new I'm gonna share my screen with you guys again again so screen share okay so these Google Educator groups are phenomenal. They're popping up everywhere. I was fortunate enough to be chosen 
to be the um, the leader for the DC metro area Google educators group so you'll see here that there's a whole bunch of different stuff that um, that you know people can um, you know collaborate on there's um, people have been sharing resources um, about different things that they're doing in their classes we just started up by the way we just started up we're less than a week old but we're already you know we already have a lot of interest about 69 members right now so we're looking to grow and it's not just people from the DC metro area and beyond you see that and beyond right there so that means that we want you we want you as a new recruit and um, let's see uh, don't say that you heard it from me but um, there may or may not be a contest starting on Monday Oh, and there may or may not be certain ways to get ahead of the game before the contest starts, like um, filling out the new member survey or putting an introduction post or posting some resources or inviting some friends to the group. I'm just saying, I I, I don't know. I, I, you didn't hear it from me, okay? Just <laughs> so um, Google educators groups are awesome. They're all over the world. Um, so you know they're all over the United States. They're they're everywhere. And as far as I know, you can join more than one. There's no limit on how many you can join. I'm already in like five or six of them myself. So have at it. You know um, you you will love it. One more thing I got to say about Google is I talked about the Google Teacher Academy. So let me share my screen with you one more time so if you put in search uh, into the Omnibox Google Teacher Academy then the very first link if you click on it then it'll tell you all about the Google Teacher Academy and some dates I was just at this one on June 25th and 26th shout out to the people going on July 30th and 31st I have uh, quite a few homies in that group so hello to you all there's uh, there's one going on in Sydney in uh, Philippines, Brazil, Mexico, UK, Netherlands, Malaysia, India, and in Austin. So these are phenomenal. Um, definitely take advantage of this. Um, we would, you know, I, the people in the Google Educator. Um, I'm sorry, the the people in the Google uh, Certified Teacher cohort in my cert, in my GCT cohort in Atlanta. Oh, these people were phenomenal, and there was a mixer at ISTE where I got to meet people from different cohorts. These are the kinds of people that you really want to be around. Um, these are the innovators, the movers, and the shakers, and I know that there's a lot of you guys um, as well who are watching this who, who would really, really um, enjoy the Google Certified um, Teacher Group, the Google Teacher Academy, I should say. I'm getting all mixed up on my acronyms. Um, it's it's all good in a hood. I'm I'm bringing it back. Okay, I'm I'm good now. So definitely check that out. All of the people who are interested in being Google certified teachers. Um, and I just got accepted to present at my very first GAF Summit in August. Ah, so <laughs> I'm still a little hype off of that. But yeah, Google is phenomenal. Okay. Moving on to the next topic, I'm going to talk a little bit about Voxer now. Now, if you have been following this channel, then you've seen that I've been doing a lot of Voxer videos lately. Voxer is this app that's on um, iPhone and Android, and it's kind of like a walkie-talkie, but it archives the messages, um, so you can listen to them whenever you want. You can slow them down, speed them up. Well, not really slow them down, but you can speed them up. You can have group chats, and educators are really using this technology to kind of continue conversations offline. It brings like a whole new dimension because now you have voice added, and you get to know these people even better now um, by using uh, by using Voxer. And I use it. Um, I use it professionally. I'm in about six groups right now, and um, we have one for our uh, GEG. Just, just saying, that might be another way to earn points, but I didn't tell you. And um, let me see, what else? There, there, there's a bunch of different ones, and it's just awesome the conversations that people are having. So I love it, and also personally, I, I, I like using it because um, I'm kind of spoiled and I hate to talk on the phone. I got spoiled by texting and this is kind of, I'm, I'm kind of using Voxer in place of phone calls now, um, you know, because it, yeah, I, l let me just leave it at that. I, 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 I'm not really much of a phone person, but this is, this is, um, to me personally, I like it better than phone conversations, but 
Anyway, getting back to being a connected educator, then Voxer has some wonderful implications. Um, people are thinking outside the box, thinking of ways to use it with their students. So, you know, just keep being creative. That's the name of the game. Another thing, the next one I want to talk about is Edmodo. A lot of educators have already heard of this tool. It's phenomenal. Think of Facebook for the classroom and um, you have Edmodo. You have the basic concept of Edmodo. There's just so much more it can do. Um, I like Edmodo because it allows me to go paperless in my classroom. All of my assignments are um, online and it also allows back channeling in the classroom. Um, it's it's phenomenal. Oh, and I also have to say, Google also has um, tools coming out to do that. So watch out for Google Classroom as well. But I, I like both. I like I love Google and I love Edmodo because even though they do similar things, then there are differences and there are different ways that you know both of them can prove very useful in the class. So um, for example, Edmodo, their library feature, I'm really loving that. Uh, because it allows you to, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm thinking of Discover. Discover is great because it has so many resources in there for, for lesson planning and tools that you can use with the kids, like different plugins. We used them in my classroom for warm up in technology class. The kids would use them um, to learn about coding through Learn Street every day. So that was, um, that was a good one. Um, also, the opportunities for professional development. Um, and shout out to EdmodoCon, which is happening next week, I believe. It's it's the first week of August, and um, there's going to be a lot of great presenters talking about great ways that they're using Edmodo. So definitely check out Edmodo. You can use it with your students. You can use it with your personal learning networks. Um, you know, you can set up groups for for professional learning. It's it's amazing. Just check it out. Take my word for it. It's solely free, and a lot of districts have already. Um, kind of organized uh, Edmodo to uh, to leverage student learning so it's awesome love it and the last one I want to talk a little bit about are blogs so oh well first of all let me show you what Edmodo looks like in case you didn't know since I set it up on my screen already <coughs> yeah but this is what Edmodo looks like and check out the Edmodo video that I did a few months back and uh, yeah so, next thing, talking about blogging. Here's an example. Um, ugh, I, I kind of, I'm not feeling this background so much anymore, so I'm going to change it. But this is my blog, and I do it on uh, WordPress. A lot of teachers um, and people in general use WordPress. But yeah, you know, you can blog, and you can, it, it's just really cool. Um, I have a lot of different post on here yeah yeah yep I got particularly inspired after ISTE but whatever that's just my blog for you I'm sure you can do a lot better <laughs> so um, blogging is awesome because so many times we have so much to say but we don't necessarily have the venue uh, the avenues uh, or the confidence to even step out there and say it so blogging has helped me a lot as an introvert you'd never be able to guess that I'm an introvert but I totally am um, but it's helped me kinda say the things that were on my mind in a non-threatening to me <laughs> way because pretty much anytime I open my mouth is stepping outside of my comfort zone um, but but yeah blogging has just been phenomenal and if it's this cool for me to use blogging if, if I think that it's so amazing just getting my thoughts out there think about how students would feel here I am a grown woman you know and I sometimes I feel like 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 blogging is a push that I need the voice that I need to you know to to be able to share what's on my mind so students they you know, they they love it like my kids love it that's all I can really say about it uh, we used it last year and I wasn't really expecting it to take off the way it did but it just kind of exploded um, because prior to doing that we were doing journal posts, um, journal reflections and a lot of the kids I couldn't even get a sentence out of them I'd get like a couple words here and there replying to the thing um, but you know everybody of course wanted to share whatever they wrote in their journals and then whenever they shared then you know they'd of course like say what was on their mind not what was written on the paper but 
it was taking up so much time because everybody wanted to share, and I'm such a softie that I'd let them keep going, and I was just like, oh my gosh, we have to do instruction. But blogging, when we switched over to blogging, then um, the kids were able to, when they were finished typing, you know, of course they would they would type everything, you know, because um, because they wouldn't be able to, you know, to go up there and make it up on the spot. So they would they would make sure to address the question fully, and then they would go on other kids' blogs and comment on those. So um, that was one way to to kind of collaborate using the kid blog, and I loved it. They loved it. So and whenever we weren't blogging, they're just like, when are we going to blog again? So I, I love um, kid blog uh, for that. But there's lots of different avenues. So um, let me see. There's also a blogger. Let me share my screen with you one more time. So we already talked about that. So blogger is another good one. I used to be on blogger, but uh, yeah, I got off there. I mean, I love it, but I just went for the WordPress. And kid blog, this is what kid blog looks like. So a couple of honorable mentions. I uh, want to talk about Instagram where you can take pictures. And it's really an app, but they have like a, a website support for it. So Instagram is really cool. Heard some teachers um, assigned students to use Instagram to like take pictures of certain concepts. That, that was a really cool spin, I think. Vine is another one that the kids are on. Um, and, and a lot of teachers are on too. I have a Vine, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because I get kind of silly on there. But, um, pretty much you can make six second videos about, um, anything. They're just six second long. Um, compare this to Twitter where you only have 140 characters. So, Vine is another cool app, um, where you can have the students tell their story this way, or you can tell the story to your students, or you can put little snippets of what you're doing in class, or you can record special events and, you know, have a Vine page for your parents. The possibilities are endless. And one more honorable mention, Facebook. Um, you can create a Facebook page, and this is mine right here, and you can put, like, lots of different things on there. So, um, as I do, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty much... That's pretty much it, my friends. So, once again, we have our big five. We have Twitter, Google, Voxer, Edmodo, blogging, with honorable mentions going to Instagram, Vine, and Facebook. So I'm about to get up out of here. I'm kind of over my time right now. But if you want to connect on Twitter, at Sarah the Teacher is me. My website is sarahjanthomas.com. Facebook page that you just saw, forward slash Sarah the Teacher. The blog, sarahdeteacher.com. And finally, our lovely Google Educator group, GEGDMV, on tiny URL. So hopefully you feel a little bit more connected right now or maybe have some inspiration, some ideas to connect. Uh, feel free to get at me any of the ways I said before if you want to you know, jump on a discussion. And uh, thank you for tuning in. All right, friends, I will be back um, with, uh, you know, getting some stuff off my chest. I might just do it as a blog, really, because uh, yeah, I, can't, I can't really see myself going in on a video. Um, that's way outside my comfort zone. But I'm going to go in. Yes, I am. All right, y'all have a good day. Take care. Bye.